Bond enthalpies are important because they can actually be used to calculate the change in enthalpy of a reaction. They also can help us understand what's happening during the reaction, which bonds are broken and which bonds are formed. After watching this video, you should be able to describe how bond enthalpies are related to electrostatic interaction between electrons and nucleus. You should be able to put a series of bonds in order of increasing bond enthalpies. You should be able to describe how to calculate the change in enthalpy for a reaction using bond enthalpies, and you should be able to do that. All changes in enthalpy represent a chemical reaction. You know, enthalpy of reaction is a general term for the change in enthalpy for a reaction. Enthalpy of formation is where you have elements in the center state going to one mole of the product. Enthalpy of vaporization, you're going from one mole of liquid to one mole of gas. Enthalpy of fusion, you're going from one mole of solid to one mole of liquid. Enthalpy of combustion, you're combusting one mole of a compound. Lattice enthalpy, you're going from ionic solids to gaseous ions. Enthalpy of hydration, gaseous ions to solution. Enthalpy of solution, solvent plus solute, you're going to solution. And bond enthalpy, you're going from a molecule to fragments. And so for instance, if we're going from butane, CH4H10, and we rip off a hydrogen, then we for CH4, CH, C4H9 plus a hydrogen atom. And so we're going from a molecule to fragment the change enthalpy for the reaction would be a bond enthalpy. Bond enthalpies are always positive because it always takes energy to break a chemical bond. Now there's actually three different ways of calculating change enthalpy for a reaction. We can do it from enthalpies of formation, and so products minus reactants. We can use Hess's law, and so if we add up a series of reactions, we add the corresponding delta H's, or we can use bond enthalpies. Now please notice the difference in these equations. So for bond enthalpies, we do the sum of the bond enthalpies of the bonds broken minus the sum of the bond enthalpies of the bonds formed. So broken minus formed. A little bit different than products minus reactants. Now the reason it's broken minus formed is because it's going to take energy to break them and so that's going to lead to a positive delta H. The formed you release energy and so actually is a negative contribution to your enthalpy, of for, uh, enthalpy for the reaction. Now bond strength is the energy required to break the bond. And so we define energy as when atoms are infinitely far apart and define that as zero. And then as the atoms come together, you have a strengthening electrostatic interaction between the electrons and nuclei. Eventually you get to an optimal configuration. And then if you get too close, then you have nuclear nuclear repulsions and the energy goes up. And so the bond energy is just energy required to completely separate the atoms. Now bond enthalpy is a little bit different than that. Bond enthalpy is the enthalpy of the fragments minus the enthalpy of the molecule. And so it's similar to bond energy, but a little bit different. And so if we're looking at breaking the hydrogen-hydrogen bond, then it's going to be two times the enthalpy of formation of hydrogen atoms minus the enthalpy of formation of the hydrogen molecule, which turns out to be 436 kilojoules per mole. Now for some bond enthalpies, there's only one type of the molecule with that type of bond. So for HH, only H2 has that bond. For other bonds, they're in many different types of molecules. And so for instance, the carbon-hydrogen bond is in millions of different molecules. And so the bond enthalpy for carbon-hydrogen bond is actually going to be an average of, over all those molecules. And so bond enthalpies don't give you a very accurate answer in terms of enthalpy for the reaction, in part because the bond enthalpies are going to be averages over a large number of molecules and also because they neglect things like intermolecular forces. And so for some molecules, the bond is only in one molecule, and so those bond enthalpies should be fairly accurate. For other bonds, there are many molecules, and so those bond enthalpies will not be very accurate. Now if we understand bond enthalpy for different molecules, there's two things to consider. The number of electrons being shared by the, bond, by the two atoms, and also how close the atoms are. And so the more electrons being shared, the stronger electrostatic attraction between nucleus and electrons, the stronger the bond, the larger the bond enthalpy. And so triple bonds are stronger than double bonds, which are stronger than single bonds. And so N2 has a triple bond, O2 has a double bond, and F2 has a single bond. And so you see that it's a huge difference there. But that's the most important consideration. The secondary consideration is how close the atoms are. So typically the closer the atoms, the stronger the bond, the stronger electrostatic interaction. And so if we look at HF, HCl, HBr, HI, Going down the periodic table, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, the atoms get bigger, and so those bond distances are getting bigger, and so those bond enthalpies are actually getting lower. And so we can also see in terms of H2, Cl2, Br2, I2, again, going down the periodic table, atoms bigger, bonds bigger. 
Now notice f2 is a little bit different. It's an exception to this rule. f2 does not follow the trend. And so the more electrons being shared by the atoms, the larger the bond order. Bond order is just a measure of pair, number of pairs being shared by the, the nuclei. But the more electrons being shared, the closer the atoms, the stronger electrostatic attraction between the electrons and nucleus. The smaller the atoms, the closer the atoms, the stronger the attraction between electrons and nucleus. The stronger the attraction, the larger the bond enthalpy. The lower the potential energy, the more stable the bond. But please remember that the number of electrons shared is the most important consideration. And so you only look at the size of the atoms if you're looking at bonds that have the same bond order. And so now we can calculate the change enthalpy for a reaction by using the bond enthalpies. And so again, it's just going to be the sum of the enthalpies of the bonds broken minus the sum of the enthalpies of the bonds formed. And I should also make sure that to note that in the reaction, everything has to be in the gas phase. You can only calculate the change enthalpy for a reaction if all the compounds are in the gas phase. And so to estimate the reaction enthalpy for a reaction using bond enthalpies, we typically draw the Lewis diagrams so we can actually see which bonds are broken, which bonds are formed. And then we look at the table to find the bonds broken by bonds formed. And so if we look at this reaction, we see that the nitrogen nitrogen triple bond is going to be broken. That's 944 kilojoules per mole. Three hydrogen hydrogen bonds are broken, 436 each. And then we're in form one, two, three, four, five, six nitrogen hydrogen bonds. And so again, bonds broken minus bonds formed, and we actually get minus 76 kilojoules per mole. And so we have a minus delta H, and so that should be exothermic. And so bond enthalpies are always positive, but sometimes the enthalpy of reaction that we calculate using bond enthalpies, they can be positive or negative. So again, bond enthalpy is always positive, but the delta H for a reaction calculated using bond enthalpies can be positive or negative. Now we can actually calculate the enthalpy, change enthalpy for this reaction using Enthalpies of formation, just for comparison. And so again, using enthalpies of formation, products minus reactants. And so nitrogen and hydrogen are both elements in a standard state, so they're zero. Enthalpy of formation of ammonia is minus 46. And so two times minus 46 gives us a minus 92. And so using bond enthalpies, we've got minus 76. Using enthalpies of formation, we got a minus 92. And so again, bond enthalpies can give you an estimate and again, I think the more important part is that they actually give you an idea of what's happening during the reaction, which bonds are broken, which bonds are formed. We can look at another example. Here we have carbon graphite, carbon gas plus water going to CO2 plus hydrogens. Now doing bond enthalpies, we draw the Lewis diagrams. Again, it's going to be broken minus formed. And so we're breaking four hydrogen oxygen bonds. We're forming two carbon oxygen double bonds. And again, when you're doing this, always make sure you're paying attention whether or not you're dealing with a single double or a triple bond. You can, could be having a bond enthalpy for a bond and a half. And so we're forming two carbon double bonds, oxygen double bonds, and two hydrogen hydrogen bonds. And so if we plug in the numbers for these bond enthalpies, we get minus 506. And so that's a very exothermic reaction. If we do this calculation using enthalpies of formation, products mass reactants, we get minus 627. And we can even do it with uh, Hess's law coming with a series of reactions. And in this case, we get minus 627. And so using enthalpies of formation and using Hess's law, we actually get minus 627. Those two are the most accurate ways of calculating change enthalpy for a reaction. Using bond enthalpies, we get minus 506. The bond enthalpies is the least accurate way of calculating a change enthalpy of a reaction. But again, I think it's important because it helps us understand what's actually happening during the reaction.